Kelly here with my friend Kimbra. I'm in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and Kimbra's in Los Angeles, California. And we thought uh, with so many people out of work right now, and we know a lot of them because we know a lot of actors and musicians and <laughs> artists and people in the restaurant industry. Yeah. Um, so we thought today we would share um, some ideas how to make money using the gig economy, but we also wanted to address um, the changes in law mm -hmm. uh, for the gig economy. Kimber, you did a little bit of research mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. you it's AB5, I think yep, is the law. AB5. Um, and what and did it you actually find out? started in January. It was uh, enacted in January. Uh, Loretta, excuse me, Loretta Gonzalez, uh, I believe mm -hmm. she was the person that was really pushing that. And I spoke to my accountant about it and uh, he was like, oh, it's very complicated, you know, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. Unfortunately, a lot of people have been out of work during this time. So we're not really going to see okay. really how it plays out until next year. But know? it's kind of, it's um, stopping people from being independent contractors, right? It's, they have right. to get well, it seems to me. Yeah. It seems to me that anybody that hires a person in, that formerly would be a 1099 or a gig worker uh, is now going to have to be listed as an employee and a W-2 and they have to pay, the employer has to pay taxes on them. And I'm thinking that even if it's a person that works, you know, five hours a month or whatever. So formally you could be, do whatever you want. You didn't have to, you could say, Hey, I can work today. I can't work tomorrow. That kind of thing. That's what made you an independent contractor. Right. So now that you have to show that you're following their guidelines that, that, that they're, you know, telling you when you can go to work and when you can't go to work. Uh, unfortunately, um, they, there, a lot of people are thinking that we, uh, a lot of people lose jobs because a lot of employers won't right. want to take on that responsibility, won't want to take all that paperwork on. So that's and why pay the taxes, they'll have to pay, pay the taxes. Exactly. Taxes. That's why I'm just, I'm yeah. interested to see what, how it's going to play out next year. If that's really going to be, the, I think to me, the only negative thing is that, um, you lose your, your, one of the negative things is you lose your freedom. You won't be able to say, Hey, I can't work today. I can't right. work tomorrow. And a lot of people want that freedom. That's why they have right. a gig to support their other thing, whether it be music, yeah. acting, uh, writing. So, and in California, that's a real, uh, prevalent way to make a living. Many people have many gigs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I've been a gig worker. I do solo shows and I get paid by the band. And uh, unfortunately it hasn't happened since, uh, you know, February, but uh, I'm a gig worker. So I don't know if the people I sing for are going to have to take out a W-2 on me <laughs> and if they're going to so want weird. to. <laughs> yeah. That's just really strange. Um, so anyway, with that said, we know that that could be coming down the pike. It's already passed in California and it may be passing in other states and maybe even a federal law. And it was well intended. It was meant to protect sure. the employees so that they get uh, yes. you know, coverage and that they get their, their social security and everything uh, paid. That's but true. also it's going to harm a lot of people that are independent contractors or I guess it's kind of like a self-employed thing. You can consider yourself, you know, self-employed. Right. Um, but anyway, we thought, even though, you know, we have these changes in laws, we also want to encourage people to, um, instead of, you know, just sitting around and not working, maybe try to take matters into their own hands and do some part-time gigs. As you can um, see, we often take the matters into our own hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. We're very, uh, what is innovative in our entrepreneurial ship, especially yes. Kelly. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. I've done a lot of different things, a lot of gigs, a lot of self-employment, always okay. trying something new. Um, but yeah, I mean, life is interesting. And, and if you just sit around and wait for other people to help you instead of helping yourself, you know, sometimes you, you nobody ever will help you. So you have to sure. help yourself. So we just thought this would be like a, a, a fun thing to talk about and try to encourage people to uh, reach out and, and actually help people. We're both worried about people that we know and people we don't know that, um, you know, with the, the, now the rental evictions are going to start unless they get these laws passed. And I don't understand yeah. how, um, our government has closed up shop and went home for the weekend when we're having a crisis like this. So we're disappointed, but we with the, uh, did think that we would try to talk about a little bit about some gigs that are popular. Yeah. 
and share our ideas. So the first one yeah. is common and everybody knows about it being an Uber or a Lyft driver. Right. Um, I have talked to some people that do it and they seem to like it. They seem to, you know, it's not that hard. It's I have two close friends that do it and they like it. I personally wouldn't like it because I don't like driving that much, but uh, a lot of people do. <laughs> so um, it's a really good way to make a living side gig because I guess you can make your own hours. That's one of the Uber and Lyft were the two biggest people that were complaining about the 85, I believe, but yeah. I don't know how that's going to work out. But um, yeah, I have at least two good friends that do it and they like it and they make, I don't know, I'm thinking they make at least 800 to a thousand dollars a month, you know, working maybe 20 to 30 hours uh, uh, a week, you know? Yeah. So. Well, that's not, not a lot get rich. Money, but it's a little extra. Yeah. yeah it's and an don't quote me on that because I don't know exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I've heard bad about it too. I've heard that, um, you know, there's people that, that sleep in their car and they're just waiting. They're on call all the time. And so I don't think it's a lifestyle that you want to do permanently, but uh, temporarily, I think it could get you through a rough time. So yeah. the Uber, Uber driver or, or whatever, um, Uber, Lyft, are there any other ones that I don't know about the app? No, driving apps, so. I can't think of any of those others. Uber and Lyft are the biggies. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, something that I've done. I was a bartender in Hollywood for many years. Um, yeah. And worked private parties. Yeah. Uh, I made a lot of money doing private that's parties true. because you can charge hourly and get tips or you can just charge a nice hourly wage. Um, and that's another freelance gig. I did crash. Uh, I did crash a lot of the parties that she works, so I can attest to <laughs> yeah. that. I had, I had to bring my assistant along. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Kimber got to come to some of the fun parties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I did, I worked some really fun parties. Um, one of them I'll bring up. Uh, okay. I, I have such a fond memory of that night. Um, the Simpsons, Jessica really? Simpson and Ashley Simpson. I, I um, did a party. It was one of their birthdays. It might've been Jessica's birthday and it was at their parents' house and their mother, Tina was so sweet. She hugged me goodbye. She made me Aww. feel great at home. She showed me around her kitchen and said, make yourself at home. And this is where this is. And that is, and, um, they just made me feel like part of the family. And I remember, um, the two girls, Jessica and Ashley, were so polite and proper, and I was really impressed. I was very impressed with the family, not to, you know, not to mention the beautiful home that I was in, but I was impressed with them and their friends, and that was a really uh, fun event. I've done a lot of other ones in celebrity homes, too, but that's one that really stood out to me because they were just such nice people, really nice. I felt like I was at one of my aunt's houses. Oh, uh, that's that really day. nice. So, yeah, yeah, you had some... I was just huh. saying, you have had you've had some good experiences bartending because for many years you had helped you lead a very uh, expensive lifestyle in Los Angeles. It helped, you know, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you had the expensive apartment and yeah. and you worked relatively little hours. I would I want to say you worked yeah. what, two nights a week, maybe three nights. Well, a week. there were times when I only worked a couple nights a week, but it was really hard work. I mean, you 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 were recovering the rest of the week because you really sure. pounded. You might you might be on your feet and just going full speed ahead for five hours. Sure. Um. So it's hard work. But it's so fun. I mean, it yeah. was so fun. You're like so a fun. rock star, you know, in a way. Well, it kind of was because when you actually, another time I was working in a Hollywood nightclub and I'm like looking out into the sea of people waiting to get drinks. Um, like sometimes if the DJ puts on a really bad song, <laughs> the whole dance floor is at the bar because they all want to drink at once. So like, you've got a hundred people That's staring funny. at you. Um, and I looked up and I remember there was like, there's, there, there were all these celebrity faces right. staring at me. Wait, Kelly, Kelly, right Kelly. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Will I am from black eyed peas was one of my favorites. He was always in the crowd. And, uh, I remember Christina Aguilera's, um, her, her choreographer, Jerry, oh. who was a sweetheart. I loved him. Um, right. And so many other, um, who else? You know, Mark McGrath and uh, uh, cute. Barry Moore. Oh, Mark McGrath. He's so cute. Uh, Ashton Kutcher. Um, he's so pretty. Oh, yeah. Um, pretty boy. My well, Another one of my favorite, favorite, favorite customers, besides uh, Will I Am. I love Will. Um, another very polite, nice, super guy was Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, oh, really, really he, hmm. he, he was so genuine and so real. He never acted like he was famous. And I remember one night, um, I was real busy and he was, you know, off to the side waving money at me. And I was just, I saw him, but I'm like, I can't get to you right now. And in my head, I'm going, Oh my God, that's Mark Wahlberg. He's so cute. I'd love to drop everything and just go wait on him, but I couldn't. So right. finally he got closer to me and he was, I remember he just said, 
dang, you're good. And I was like, oh, you know, cause I, I felt like, oh my God, he's going to yell at me for not right, right. Like, waiting quicker. And he was just so sweet and humble. That's um, good. not to mention cute and sexy and all this. So, um, yeah, I just had, you know, I got to meet a lot of really cool, fun people in Hollywood, but you know, if you're a party bartender, you're not always going to be invited to celebrity homes. You know, a, a lot of times it's just, I, you know, I worked a, a wedding, I've worked some weddings, wedding parties, mm -hmm. and I'd, you know, watch the bride and groom and I'd get all teary eyed and, you know, you get all into it because sure. you're a part of making their event successful. Right. Um, and so, you know, you want to, you really get invested in it. So right. anyway, it's a really, it's another really good gig. If you learn to bartend, um, and you want it, you know, you kind of have to bring a lot of your own tools. So you want to collect things and, uh, be able to, I have my partner in, uh, in the business, we do uh, bartending classes online. He has a whole bar, like he brings everything. He, he has a truck and he just loads it all up. He does a lot of private parties. In fact, he does more private, he's done more private parties in his lifetime than anyone ever. I'm trying to get him on the show so he can oh, tell yeah. us his stories. That's Kyle, right? Amazing. Kyle, Kyle Brandt, mm -hmm. yeah. I hope he doesn't mind that I mentioned him. But um, yes, we're trying to get Kyle on the show when he can fit us in. <clears throat> yeah, his busy <laughs> but schedule. A lot of um, private bar parties, more than anyone I've ever met. Um, wow, good life. for him. So um, par private parties, that's another good uh, gig for... Well, I, used, I just thought of something. It's not on your list, but I used to do singing telegrams. <laughs> that was well, the most... I don't think yes. that's on your list. That's a, that's another one. But third on my list is something that you can talk about oh, is, okay. you know, singing or being in a band. Oh, because that's true. You're, you know, I'm your greatest fan. Right. Uh, she's got, we're going to get her singing on the show one day. I'm <laughs> working on that. Um, I'm shy. You have to hear Miss Kimra <laughs> sing. I, I just love her voice. Um, and so you, you're in several bands right now. Um, I've been to, well, my own little thing that I have that I've been doing like little restaurant gigs when, when we could do them, you know, jazz stuff. But then I'm in another band called No Strings Attached, and we've been doing uh, clubs and private parties, fundraisers. A couple of the guys uh, belong to these different organizations, and they got us as the band because they were on the committee. So uh, they, uh, it's a really cool band, the Snow Strings Attached. But anyway, uh, I've been singing with them for over a year now. And they, I, you know, I'm always telling them, I will sing for nothing less than blah, blah. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's good work if you can get it. And She's such a diva. <laughs> I know, I really am. But uh, no, but these guys can afford it because they're, uh, they're all very um, high up in their prospective fields. They do other things too. They, yeah. One's a lawyer. One's You're a worth it. <laughs> well, thank you. I do. I, you know, I, I, I do, I put in the work. So, um, yeah, so singing is great when you can get the work, uh, or other, uh, session playing is good. Like I have a friend that does, uh, keyboards for different famous people, you know, so, but that's more of a, a light, you need to go on the road for a long, long time. So that's a little bit different, but yeah, you can get a lot of music work in LA, uh, doing private parties. I've done those, you know, yeah. so. Well, really anywhere. It doesn't matter where you that's are. True. Um, a friend of mine I went to high school with, he's got a band and he, uh, you know, I'm from Ohio, a little town in Ohio and they, you know, they, they play their music at the local bar. And, um, so anyone really anywhere, if you're a musician and you want to put together a band, there's some extra gig money. And right now with the social distancing, um, it's not as common you right. know, as popular, but you could even do, you know, you can do your own videos. You can put them on YouTube. You can put them on a, That's a true. Patreon and uh, get money, you know, get I know money. this really good uh, singer. I don't think she'll mind me mentioning her name, Trisha Kelly. And she's doing a really innovative thing. Like she's doing zoom and then she's charging people like, you know, you got to tell her what you want to sing. And then oh. you pay. And I thought that was really innovative. Yeah. You know, yeah, you could do personalized songs for mm -hmm. people's birthday or something. Mm -hmm. So there you go. If you're right. a singer or a musician, that's right. number three and a third way to make money in the gig economy. <laughs> and number four on the list is a comedian or a magician, basically an entertainer. If you do any kind of entertaining um, or even dressing like a character at a children's. Oh party yeah, that's something. definitely, I've seen a lot of ads for that where people dress up from Disney characters and entertain the little kids. You can definitely make money doing that. Um, the comedian one, it's a little harder until, you, you know, you got to pay your dues, of course, and yeah. until you get a really good following, then you can start making money for sure. Yeah. But it is kind of a gig thing where, you know, if you go to the comedy clubs, that's and, true. Um, you know, sometimes once you get a following, you get paid yeah. there too. So that's a, a number four on the list. <laughs> uh, number five we have is being a tutor. 
Oh, I've done that too. Another thing that you do, you've tutored. um... Uh I used to do that for um, English, actually. Um, So you can get a lot of uh, people, um, you know, that's English is not their first language. I wasn't actually doing that. I was doing more uh, people trying to get into college. I was helping them prep for the uh, SATs, you know, Mm -hmm. but you, there's a lot of work in, uh, you can do that online. Actually, you can sign up with um, agencies that got a, a, excuse me, have a huge following in China. So the, but the hours are a little odd, but all you need is a bachelor's degree. And, um, you know, the pay's pretty good. I think it's like, I want to say 40 bucks an hour or something like that, but you won't work a lot, but yeah. yeah. But I mean, you might, even if you get like one person a day, or that would be extra money. You can probably get more than one person a day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And well, and you've, you've taught um, music, right? You've been a private instructor. Actually, I still teach voice now. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, So yeah, voice, actually singing lessons are a very profitable, profitable thing if you can do it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yeah. You have to know how to sing first. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But you know, and I don't charge a lot like some do, but I remember I was paying a coach gosh, it was at least 40 bucks a half hour. So, you know, they're anywhere from 75 to 125 an hour if you get a really good one. So yeah, some people have, you know, really big uh, businesses doing that. And, you know, so yeah, it's, it's good if you can get that kind of work. Yeah. Well, and now with the internet, there are so many ways to teach courses for mm-hmm, the coach, mm-hmm. people online. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's all these platforms, Udemy and Skillshare and mm-hmm. a lot of platforms where you can teach a course online too. Sure. So that's another yeah. um, way to develop. If you know some kind of, if you have some kind of skill, mm-hmm. um, you can teach that people are willing to pay for. There's another mm-hmm. way to make money online. Um, that's number five. So number six is being a dog walker or pet oh. sitter. So there are people that go to work every day and they don't want their dog to be left home alone. So they hire a dog walker to come in and take it for a walk and play with it and entertain. You know, it. to be honest with you, that's a really good way to make extra money. Cause I had a friend that she would have their um, dogs, the dogs that she was walking, they would come over every day. The person would just leave the dogs with her and she would have them the whole day. But that doesn't mean you've got to entertain them because most of the time they're just like laying around and you walk them like three <laughs> times a day. But she made extra money by letting the dogs be able to stay at her house. So, mm-hmm. you know, she was making pretty good money. You know, I think she was charging like 40 bucks a day, 35 to 40 bucks a day. So like I said, you know, it's not like you have to do stuff with them all day, but just make sure you walk right. them at least three times a day yeah. throughout the day. But it's not a bad way to make, Passive, I guess that would be passive, that'd be active income, but <laughs> yeah, well, you're like a pet sitter, I guess. You're yeah. making sure they don't tear their yeah. owner's house apart. That's true. And that they're not all by themselves because right. they get depressed being home. Yeah. Alone. And they just liked being by her because, you know, even if you're on your computer, they just liked having someone there, you yep. know? Yep. I've got mine right here in her bed. <laughs> she just wants to be beside me. That's all she cares right. about. So, uh, okay. So, number seven is being a YouTuber. Uh-huh. So the new big thing is doing podcasts and making videos on YouTube, uh, which is what Kimber and I are doing. I wanted to do, I've wanted to do this for so long. Um, I had a group together about five years ago that mm-hmm. we were trying to do a podcast, but we just couldn't, there were four of us and we didn't have, to, we just couldn't get our schedules together. Mm-hmm. But um, finally, when I pitched it to Kimber, she said, okay. So I was well, excited. I told to Kelly, I said to Kelly, well, she, you know, you caught me at a good time because there's not a lot going on. <laughs> No, no you're still seriously. so busy. She's still very busy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, seriously, uh, I thought, why not? I've never yeah. done a podcast before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, if you have something, some information to share with people, uh, if you want to entertain people, educate people, get people thinking, you know, which is what we, we hope to do a little bit of everything. You know, we want to entertain people with conversations, want to do a little bit of educating and we want to get people thinking and, you know, stir some conversation. Um, So you can really do anything you want uh, with YouTube. It's not necessarily a big way to make money, especially initially because there's restrictions. You have to have a thousand subscribers. So please subscribe. Yeah. Um, we're not even close. We're just starting and 4,000 hours of view time, people watching the videos. So there, it, there's a road, you know, it's a long road. Um, but if you work hard, uh, and you have something of interest to share with people, 
um, then you can really build up uh, your subscriber base. And there's other, you know, there's Anchor, which is uh, just audio. And then um, they distribute your podcast uh, via Apple and iTunes and Spotify. Um, so you can also make revenues that way too. So there's a lot of different ways to make revenues being a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, and it's relatively inexpensive to start. You just need your camera, which could be a, a you know, a computer camera and a mic. You know, there's what another job. I don't know if it's on your list. What what number are we at, by the way? Um, number seven is YouTuber. Okay, sorry. I'll I'll wait till the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, number eight is affiliate sales. So that's when you sell things online for other people or really it doesn't have to be just online, but when you sell things for other people, mm -hmm. you get commissions on what you sell. Um, so you can sign up with Amazon and there's all kinds, if you just Google affiliate sales, there's all kinds of ways that you can um, sign up to be an affiliate and promote other people's products. So you don't even have to come up with your own. You can do promote them on Facebook um, or various spots on the internet and make your own website or whatever. And you can get paid commissions for selling other people's products. So that's another, uh, relatively easy and low cost way to right. make some extra money. So number nine is being a photographer. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, wedding photographer portraits, um, you know, kids, parents love to get their kids, pictures of their kids. Um, uh, there, you can also, if you take nature scenes or all, all kinds of different pictures, you can upload them to iStock and Shutterstock.com sure. online. And then um, they will sell your pictures for you. They sell the pictures and you get commissions on all the photos. Yeah, you know, them. actually I was, at, I was at a red carpet event uh, at the beginning of the year. And one of the, uh, the photographer who was taking the pictures told me that he had been uh, an engineer at... Um, one of the en big engineering companies in Southern California and he, he, want, he retired early and he said, I've always loved photography. So now he's making um, income, you know, showing up at these, you know, um, film festivals and he gets hired uh -huh. by the, but he gets paid by, um, by the movie theaters and stuff, but he'll take all okay. the pictures and then he also gets paid by selling them. Like you're mentioning, you know, yeah. go online and you buy, like if you were to go and you wanted that picture, you buy it from him. Yeah. So he was making pretty good extra money doing that. And it was sort of a second career for him. And I thought that mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, the paparazzi mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm. of celebrities and, uh, you know, in the big cities that would work. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's another option. Well, actually, uh, yeah. Ugh, when I, when I lived in Europe, there was this lady I knew that took a picture of the Pope in his swimming pool, she, oh my climbed, gosh. she climbed over the wall and got a picture. And I guess she made a ton of money, uh, sold it all up. Wow. You know, so in Europe, they're really, you think America's bad. In Europe, they're really bad about the paparazzi. I mean, they're just everywhere. Well, you know, it's had yeah. some tragic turns on occasion. Yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, what was number 10? What is your idea? Well, it's not really my idea, but it's something that I know that you can do if you really need money. House cleaning, you know? Yeah. You know, people, yeah. uh, uh, I've heard friends of mine saying that yeah. they were going to do it because they wanted to make some extra money. So yeah. just you know, make some flyers, take them around, put mm -hmm. them on bulletin boards. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, a lot of people are looking for help with that. Yeah. Especially pe people that work full time, sure, sure. Um, they don't want to come home and have to clean their house or spend sure. the weekend cleaning. So yeah, I think that's a really good one too. Yeah. So those are probably the top 10 easiest, low cost ways um, to make money. When I was in Los Angeles at the colleges, I taught a course called Turn Your Ideas Into Cash, which is mm. kind of a similar idea of taking matters into your own hands and doing your own thing. Uh, kind of being self-employed. So we'll put a link to it down below. We're going to give you a really low price. We're going to charge $4.95 for the, it's like an ebook um, because we know it's a pandemic. We want to give back and help people as much as we can. Um, I will be teaching that class this fall here in Wyoming, but I don't know. Everybody wants to come here um, to take the course. So uh, I think it's, it's cheaper uh, just to pay the 495. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think it is. And it's pretty self-explanatory and it's got some quizzes and uh, just to help you actually, it's how you're developing the whole business idea. So um, hopefully, you know, I'd like to see in the future more and more people mm. do their own thing and have their own business and not have to rely on an employer. I, I think it's rough to have some, your future, and your life in someone else's hands. So 
um, I've always been in favor of taking matters into your own hands and um, creating something for yourself. Yeah. So, all righty. Well, Kimber, do you have anything else to say? Any thoughts? Um, Good luck. Yeah, I thought of one more little job. Temp work. Yeah. What, temp work. Temp work. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a good, good one. I did that a long, long time ago. So it's, you can get with these agencies yeah. and uh, they do actually yeah. send you out a lot. And sometimes you'll get a permanent job out of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. And there's for. a list, there's about a list of 40 different things, including the 10 that we talked about here mm -hmm. uh, in the book to turn your ideas into cash. So there's other, cool. other ideas there too. So good. Cool. All, right, All right, everyone. Well, yeah. we wish you luck and um, hang in there. Don't let things get you down. Take matters into your own hands. If you're, if you're struggling right now, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Just do it. Okay. As, they, as everyone keeps saying, yeah. we're all in this together. Yes. Yes, we are. So, all right. All right. Have a good day, camera. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.